Hey guys, Pin over here, bringing you not just another narrative Wi-Fi battle, but actually my 700 subscriber video. 700. Um, yeah. I am really thankful that, um, you know, a lot more people have been enjoying my content lately, have been checking it out. I've been mixing things up, you know, bringing you, um, a variety of videos. I think that is one of the things I enjoy most about my channel and my, um, my experience with YouTube is that I get to incorporate a lot of my different hobbies into, um, you know, content for you guys. Uh, just letting you guys know, there will be some announcements here. I'm sorry for those of you that don't like the little bit more lengthy announcements, but um, I kind of got a lot to go over. I'm sorry that I've been gone um, for a few days. I haven't posted much content lately. A lot of that is due to school. I mean, I've had, like, physics labs, multiples, two five-page papers due this week. Um, you know, humanities tests, and this and that, and history of architecture presentation, and this, and blah, 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 blah. You guys don't even know all the specifics, but just trust me when I say school's been, you know, riding me this, you know, past week. I've had a lot of, you know, big, th big things do, and I finally knocked it all, knocked it all out, and, uh, yeah, the weekend is here. I'm going to be spending a lot of that spare time making you guys content. Hopefully I'm helping you, you know, be entertained. So yeah, that's definitely my goal here. And yeah, 700 subscribers, like I said, I'm so thankful. You know, um, I've had the experience of meeting a lot of cool new people lately, you know, talking with some of my subscribers, getting to battle some of you guys, you know, this, that, and the other. And that's been really cool for me. I hope it has been for you too. Um, for those of you that don't know, I also did start a new series um, with the DJ Fry called The One Piece Weekly. Um, One Piece is definitely a huge thing for me. I love it so much. It's just amazing. It's the best manga slash anime out there, in my opinion, which I am definitely a big fan of anime and manga. Um, I really wanted to make content for it, and uh, I know he's a big fan of it too, and he jumped on board, and we decided to cast chapter reviews. So the first, uh, there's an introduction on my page, and I actually have a playlist where you can see all the episodes that we have. Right now, we just have an intro in the first episode. The first episode was uploaded to his channel, um, but you can still view it through my playlist. You can go to his channel, check it out, um, you know, check out his content, subscribe if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Um, I definitely think it's going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, by hitting us both up, you'll be notified every time there's a new chapter. Not trying to, you know, plug anything, but, you know, just giving, shooting it. Shooting it to you straight, is that how that saying goes? So, there you go. Um, this battle is actually going to be with Xenon3120. This is going to be a battle um, for my special, because Pokemon is probably what has accumulated me the most subscribers. I feel like the majority of you guys out there do enjoy the Pokemon-related content. So, it is going to be a narrative Wi-Fi battle on Heart Gold. It's a UU tier match with Xenon3120. Um, that's a name most of you guys should recognize. He has over 14,000 subs. He is a director at Ninbuzz, has a contract with them, I am. And, yeah, he's a really awesome guy. I hate to sound like one of those annoying fanboys, but, um, yeah. Back in April, which is when I started Pokemon, believe it or not, he was a big influence on me, just in the fact that I watched all of his and MTG Xerxes' videos. I learned a lot about battling from them. This was back when I hardly knew what EVs and IVs were. So, naturally, you can imagine, I was like probably maybe some of you guys out there, and... You know, just seeing his content and MG Xerxes' content really helped push me along, motivate me to get into the, you know, metagame scene, where, you know, I got my R4, got my camera, got my headset, got my everything I needed, and um, started here on the YouTube community. Before that, I was just kind of a lurker. Um, so that's about it. I mean, I really just, <laughs> like I said, I hate to sound like a fanboy, but I was really excited to have this match. He was on Skype, I was on Skype. He's looking for UU battles to test out. Um, the teams for his new project. That is right. He um, started another new project, which is something I really like about Xenon, is that he does these little things. He has the SOS project, where he tries to, you know, get outreach for those that deserve it, that have, you know, limited subscribers, limited outreach. 
and I think that's really cool. He also does this project, which is where you like submit him a Pokemon team, basically, and he's going to choose one every so often, battle with it a few times, and make sure to get at least one battle posted with it, I believe is how it works. And it's just really cool, and um, I'm glad that I got to be a part of that by battling him using one. The team he's using is actually by... Dun, 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 solar kneecaps. Um, don't know much about him, but he seems like a really cool guy. He does walkthroughs, to my knowledge. Not really as much of posting battles. You can check his channel and find out for yourselves. Um, I think the walkthroughs he's doing is heart golden leaf green. Don't quote me. Um, uh, don't know him too well, but he seems like a great guy. So, uh, yeah, I would recommend you check out DJ Fry. Um, Solar kneecaps, see on thirty one twenty. Links to everyone in the description. There are, they're all nice guys and everything. And yeah, I'm sorry that these, uh, you know, announcements took a while. But I'm back in full throttle, baby. I'm gonna be uploading content, hopefully a lot this weekend. We'll see what I can get done. Hope you guys will check out the One Piece Weekly. At least just give it a shot. See if it's something that you guys like, especially if you enjoy my kind of narrations. Because even if you don't know the medium or the content matter. It's something you could learn to love, and I think that's something you should always give a chance. So, yeah, let's go on to the battle. Hey guys, Penobi here, bringing you another narrative Wi-Fi battle with Xenon 3120. Here we go, it's a UU. Unfortunately, UU is not my preferred tier. I, w I really wish I could have played him in NU. But that aside, he's going to lead off with his Solar Knee, obviously named after the creator of the team, Solar Kneecaps. After setting up my Reflect in case he opted to go for the Rock Blast or the Explosion or any of that nonsense, um, I decided to switch into my Falcon Punch before the second layer of Toxic Spikes gets up. Um, I opt to go for the Energy Ball there, which was kind of the safe play. Um, I was predicting a... a I was predicting a um, you know, switch, because he'd predict the Leech Seed, but I didn't want to go for the Hidden Power Ice, just in case, so the Energy Ball was sort of the middleman there, the, or, not middleman, whatever, middle, middle of the safe plays, I don't know, well, however you want to say that. So yeah, he brings in the Suck Your Soul, which, you know, I've noticed is his little saying f for his YouTube thing lately, let me suck your soul. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the Leech Seed on it, because I'm pretty sure that the Leech Seed recovery and leftovers and stuff makes it worth it, despite the one layer of poison. Um, he goes for a Curse, which is actually really original. I like that. Spiritomb having no weaknesses is great to utilize this Curse-Rest sort of situation. The Rest is too obvious here, so I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock. Um, it's not like I could do too much to it anyway, except for Toxic it. But like I said, I was predicting that Rest. So the Curse is going to keep uh, you know, going on me here and all that good stuff. I'm going to switch out, go to my roundabout, and um, he's going to switch out, go to his Malotic. The reason I went to roundabout is because I could set up on it with DDs and stuff while it was asleep. Unfortunately, he made the good play switching out, and now I'm going to have to switch out in fear of the four times effective ice move. So go back to my Simmer Down version 4 because it's not very effective, and he's going to switch out, um, predicting my status move, probably predicting the T-Wave as it's more um, prominent. And I'm just going to switch out to my Tyrant Kuma, because I need to go to something that can do some damage. So he's going to go back out into Cloyster. Um, yeah, he's going to protect on this turn. I should have seen that coming. Should have just, you know, opted to switch out, because, um, you know, of the toxic damage. But I do know that I want to get some damage on some of his stuff. Hopefully something that doesn't have, um, you know, any healing. And I actually carry rest on this Azumarill along with two heal bellers, so I don't really mind too much taking the damage. He's making these switches to avoid my taking serious damage from my moves. He's making kind of the obvious plays. Well, I'm making the obvious plays. He's making the obvious predictions. But he doesn't know about rest at this point. So he was just doing some switching to wear down my Azumarill, but I actually got the better end of that. And, um, yeah, he's going to go into his DJ talks. I don't really get that, to be honest, uh, but whatever. I'm going to go into my roundabout, um, thinking, you know, maybe he'll be a uh, special attacker, just because I picture Xenon doing something wacky like that, although this is actually, you know, not Xenon, this is, well, it is Xenon, but it's not his team, it is uh, Solar Kneecaps team. But anyway, yeah, my good, der good day, sir, can wall this thing to hell. And I'm getting my screens up, which is always nice. He's doing some really shit face damage. He doesn't know that that thing packs rest also. So he's, you know, making what would be good plays. He gets a LOLOL crit on my Simmer Down version 4. No big deal. 
And it's really unfortunate that I don't whore this tier. <laughs> um, because it seems like everyone uses Melodic and Venusaurs. And if I used Melodic and Venusaur, I think I actually would have had a much better chance here. But uh, he's going to predict the switch, I guess, and go for Poison Jab. Not sure what he thought I'd go into. Maybe hoping I'd go back into the Sceptile, since that was my, you know, first original switch. But that's not going to work. And yeah, I'm going to switch to my Roundabout, which is actually a special wall. And I'm going to go for something here. Um, Dragon Dance. Now this is where I'm going to make a really bad play. I think this is it. No, no, no. Okay, not yet. I'm sorry. Go into my good day, sir. Because um, I need to just reset up my screens. That's correct. Because my light screen just faded. And um, without my screens up, since that uh, Altaria is a defensive set, it'll need additional turns to get set up right. Um, I can't do any of that business. So I'm going to switch out immediately as soon as I see an Absol. Don't want him to get a free setup because my Uxie is supportive. So go into Thousand Sunny for the Intimidite. And he is going to switch while I go for the Will-O-Wisp. Not sure if he was predicting the Extreme Speed or the Will-O-Wisp or something like that. Either way, really nice play. I actually was thinking he'd do that, but I just played it safe. Um, a Flare Blitz really would have been a lot nicer there for me and could have saved me a lot of trouble. So yeah, he's going to go into Melodic because everyone and their fucking mother runs a Melodic in UU. And takes my Waterfall very nicely, and Poison is, of course, taking its toll. Keep in mind, this is two layers of Toxic Spikes Poison, so it is progressive. Um, 1 16th, then 2 16th, then 3 16th, respectively, at the end of each turn. Um, yeah, so he's going to go for the Recover. I believe I go for the rest this turn. Um, so I'm going to get a little bit more Recovery than him. Downside being I'm going to have to go for a Switch and all that good stuff. So go into my good day, sir, because as we've already covered, I can wall this thing pretty nicely, and I know I'm still going to have the light screen up for one last turn. So I can definitely take two hits, no problem. And that's what's going to happen. Really nice for me. I'm just going to go ahead and rest back up, which is something he probably did not want to see. He was probably expecting me to have, I don't know, U-turn or yawn or who knows. So go back to my Simber Down version 4. Um, just because I know it can take these surfs, I know it can take that beating, and I need to toxic that thing. It's a must do. I mean, I need to toxic it. But I'm gonna double switch, predicting his switch to Spirit Tomb, which was actually one of the better plays for me this match, as it's going to allow me to heal Bell to awaken both my Uxi and my Azumarill. I really need that Uxi awake to set up, you know, when necessary. So he's gonna curse on my Altaria, and I think maybe this is where I make the bad play. No, 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 I go for the Dragon Claw, hoping it would kill, but it doesn't. God damn it. <laughs> kind of wishing I was a standard set instead of a special defensive set at this point, because killing that Spirit Tomb is a, would be a big pickup for me. So yeah, he's going to go back out into the, um, you know, Melodic. I should have roosted predicting that, but, you know, the battle has been going on for a long time now. Keep in mind, this is very much sped up. And I just decided to go for it. Take the risk, DD up, hope he stays in, hope to God he stays in. So I'm already on like my, you know the back foot here. Switch out into my Oxy, he gets the freeze hacks, and I'm just like, oh, this is not looking good. So I go to my Simmer Down version four. He's gonna go for the nasty plot, which is not good because this is a physical wall, Registeel, not my special wall, and I do have one of you know both types. He's gonna go for the vacuum wave, despite the plus two super effective stab on a physically defensive set. It's not even gonna do that much. Well, I mean, it's going to do much, but it's not going to kill. So I'm going to switch out into my Falcon Punch as um, Death Fodder. I actually expected to die from that. If I knew, if I had known that I wouldn't have died, maybe I would have opted to do some sort of other play. But, um, yeah, I'm going to bring my Thousand Sunny and go for the Extreme Speed, which is um, nice to get rid of that Sweeper and um, all that good stuff. So the big problem here for me is still this Melodic. I'm going to go into my Registeel, thinking I can take two hits and rest up, um, and all that good stuff. So he's going to go for another Surf. I barely survive, which is amazing. I'm so happy that I was correct in my assumption that I could survive two hits. And that's the exact reason why I had the Death Fodder Sceptiles to save it for something like that. Something popped up there, don't know what was up with that. But at this point, um, I really need to Toxic that Melodic. It's my only real chance for victory. I don't have anything else that can um, effectively take it out, especially with Sceptile gone. Um, although Sceptile is poisoned anyway, so that wouldn't have been very effective. And I go to my roundabout. 
I'm hoping that after a roost, um, I can, you know, take an ice beam, heal up, switch back out. But he's faster. Was not expecting that. Poor um, space speed knowledge on my part. And at this point, I'm pretty much going to run, I believe. Because I know it is pointless as the uh, freeze doesn't undo itself in time for me to make a move. So great game, Xenon. I wish I could have battled you in NU where um, I could have made it maybe a little more worthy of a battle. That's it for this one, guys. Peace out.